Hello everyone, it is I, Seth, again with another critique video. This is the series in which you guys submit your paintings, so that way I can critique them and tell you guys ways that you can improve your artwork. If you want to be on the next episode of the Spray Paint Art Critic, make sure to watch till the end of the video so that way you guys know how to submit paintings for the next video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the critique. Starting off the episode, we have Jeremy with a really cool forest scene done on a 14 by 24 inch canvas. The spray paints he is using is mostly Rust-Oleum, but he's started moving more and more into Montana brand spray paints. Some notes that Jeremy gave me as far as painting on canvas, since I've never personally done it, is that the canvas is a lot less glossy when it's finished, even when adding clear coat. He also told me that the canvas is way better for working with nature pieces such as this, however they are not good for scraping as the paint soaks into the canvas more. A tip that I can help you guys with this is to put a couple base coats of white on your canvas first, so that way the paint tends to sit more on the white paint after it's been dried, rather than soaking directly into the canvas. Hopefully that helps out with the canvas suggestion. So let's actually get into the critique of this painting. So this painting is very nicely done. As you can tell, it's a nature scene that doesn't have a whole lot of scraped paint going with it. It builds up in layers like a typical spray paint art painting, but it does have a whole lot of just like layers built up as far as adding paint instead of removing. It looks like he textured the sky a lot like how you would do with a planet, and then he added some foliage in the background and then adding trees in the layers ahead of that, and then adding a lot of grass textures in the foreground. For some reason, cool colors seem to work really well with blacks and whites, and I feel like he has a good contrast between the blacks and the whites as well as the color balance in this painting. It's also impressive to see a nature painting done without even scraping paint. This is done more in an acrylic fashion than a spray paint art fashion. Something I feel like that needs worked on though is the tone of the trees. What I mean by this is the trees that are further back have about the same darkness as the trees in the foreground, thus feeling, making it feel muddled and you can't really tell where one tree begins and the next one ends. They all just kind of run together in the same area. It's kind of like looking at a plate of spaghetti. You can't really tell where one noodle ends and the next one begins. It all feels like it's on the same plane or the same surface. I would also like to see more gradients in the grass and in the road texture. In the grass, it just feels like that there's like brightness on top and then like a middle tone in the middle and then dark on the very bottom as opposed to having them all mixed together. And the road just kind of stays one dull color throughout the entire thing. Other than that, a very good nature painting. Thank you, Jeremy, for entering. Our next painting is by Billy, who did a mountain and ocean scene on 11 by 14 poster board. His spray painting of choice is Spray Casso brand spray paint, and this painting is actually based off an oil painting they found on Google Images. So right away, I've seen several of Billy's paintings before. Uh, I really enjoy his style overall. He does a very cool kind of spray paint interpretation of oil painting. It never feels like a traditional spray paint painting, and it feels like a Bob Ross painting where you can see like all these different blending with the knife tool and different kinds of brush techniques and stuff like that. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed with how this turned out. It does definitely feel like an oil painting, but yet he did it completely with spray paint. The rocks definitely feel like they have a rocky, earthy texture. The water definitely feels like it's crashing down and spreading on the beach. And there's all these different color variations and tones. I also really like the hint of white in the sky that just adds a very subtle kind of cloud effect to not just a plain dull blue sky. It adds a little bit of variation and texture to it. Some things I would change though is that the blue in the background on the left hand side should have some more varying colors in it. You have all these great uh, textures and tones and colors going on. I would like to see that spread more into the water on the left hand side in some way, shape, or form. I would also like to see more shadows and contrast within your rocks. You have all these great opportunities to represent shadows, but I feel like you just use a slightly duller color of paint, whereas you could have left plenty of black gaps in there in order to make more shadows and more interesting textures. All in all, a great interpretation of an oil painting into spray paint art form. Thank you, Billy, for entering. Up next, we have James with a really cool pink nature painting done on 16 by 20 canvas and done with Rust-Oleum paint. When James first sent me this, I was incredibly blown away because nature paintings have always been very difficult for me, and this almost feels like a mastered kind of way that he did everything. From the color, the contrast, the symmetry, and the textures that he worked with everything, everything feels on point. The waterfalls actually feel like they're moving and creating like a kind of splashing and mist effect at the bottom. The tree feels alive, the space kind of feels like it's almost twinkling, and the texture of all the leaves and everything actually feel like that they're actually leaving. Leaves. He even gave some mist effects at the base of the waterfall where the tree is sitting, so that way it pushes it further into the background and thus separating the background from the foreground. Although this is an excellent painting, there are a few things I would change. While he does separate layers very well, I would maybe leave a bit more contrast. You do have a lot of the same colors here with a lot of the pinks and yellows there, and although they are separated, I feel like they could be separated even more, thus differentiating the background from the foreground. Especially back between all the waterfalls and you have all the foliage, I would maybe leave a few more gaps of black and there to really bump up the contrast and bring that contrast and the level of uh, interest in the painting to a new level. 
A good example of this is how he did it on his tree. He's got a lot of really cool subtle highlights on the tree while also keeping it black. That gives it a great contrast with the leaves that are on top of the tree. I feel like if he left just a few gaps of black within his foliage in the background, it would really bring out the contrast a little bit more. But altogether, a very well done painting. Thank you, James, for entering. And finishing off this episode, we have Alex with a really cool red pyramid scene done on 22 by 28 inch poster board. So we have our first non-nature painting of this episode, and what can I say, Alex nailed it tremendously well. We have a sunburst in the middle, an eclipse in the top left corner, a variety of textured and colored planets, a couple of pyramids, sun flares, grid lines, he just did a little bit of everything. And the thing is, none of the techniques he did were super complicated, but he did them so clean and neatly. That's why it never hurts that even if you've mastered the basic stuff, you can always improve and do better. That's why I like Mark Fussell's work so much is that he does the basic concepts of spray paint art, but he does it so well, he kind of bumped it up to a new level. And even though this painting is very well balanced, where you kind of have a plan on either side, you have three pyramids stamped there and you have all these grid lines, it works in this case because he's got the planets kind of off balance. He doesn't have them exactly in a line. They're going in a diagonal line, one plant's bigger than the other, and you can kind of follow this direction which they're kind of streaking across or how the texture is following on the planet. I would say it's borderline too symmetrical, but he just has a little bit that it kind of differentiates the two halves of the painting, thus making it interesting. I would normally say add more color to the sky because I really like color, but the way that he has the sunburst set up in this painting is that it creates a great contrast and I feel like adding color to it would just make the sky way too busy. A few things I would maybe change is to maybe get rid of the light burst on top of the pyramids. With the sunburst and the white behind the pyramids, you already have a great amount of contrast and I feel like it's unnecessary, but that's more of a personal opinion more than anything. It does bump up the contrast a little bit more, but I feel like it maybe makes it just a little bit too busy. As far as other stuff is concerned, I feel like the grid lines could be straightened out a little bit, where you could maybe get like a long straight edge and just move it over a little bit as opposed to trying to draw the lines freehand, thus creating a much straighter line. Other than that, I love the color variation that he has in this painting. It all works perfectly along with the contrast, and the symmetry is just on point with this one. I really enjoyed this painting. Thank you, Alex, for entering. So guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if you want to be on the next episode of the Spray Paint Critic, make sure to go to my Facebook page down in the description down below and submit your paintings. Make sure to include relevant information about your painting, such as the canvas that you painted on, the size of it, the paint that you used, maybe even how long you've been painting, and any other relevant information that can help me when I'm critiquing your artwork. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, I will see you all later.